All right, people. So for many, many, many years now, I've been asking people from St. Lucia to get more serious into agriculture, more serious into farming. But the people are taking that for a joke. Let me, give, let me refresh your minds to better understand what I'm trying to avoid in the country. Some of you will remember your history in 70 AD when the Roman Empire sieged Jerusalem. And this thing happened for a few years. There was a point in time when the, the, the army, the Roman army, they moved out. So these people in, in Jerusalem thought everything was all right and they came back. When you, when you look at that history, you realize what happened. There were people, people who were actually cooking human flesh to eat. There were people who were eating babies because there was no food. Let me tell you people something. And this is a very serious thing I'm telling you. When there is no food, human beings become cannibals. You can even observe it from animal behavior. There was a time I was observing a situation in St. Lucia. There's a guy who had a couple thousand chicks, chickens. And there was a shortage of animal feed on island. And the guy took me to watch the animals. They, it was so bad that the guy could not go there. He did not have food to give them. He could not go there to see what was happening. He brought me there. He drove me there to see. But he himself could not look at it. He stayed at distance and he allowed me to go and look at it. And what did I see? The animals were pecking each other, pecking each other intestines and eating the other intestines, eating the flesh out of, uh, out of living animals. Whereas an animal was, would walk, another one would be pecking it and eating the animals and the other things that came out. These are some of the things, and we can see that even when in, in animals, and if you look at the, um, the, the, the besieged, or the siege that happened in Jerusalem in 70 AD. These were some of the things that are happening. And you need to go and look at those things yourself. Do not just believe what I'm saying, but go and research those things yourself to see if what I'm saying is the truth, which I'm, I, I know for a fact that what I'm saying is the truth. People, let me tell you something. What happens? I just want to ask you a few questions. What happens if there is a war or something that is going on in the waters up north? We are in the south. See, like a lot of we now, we fail to produce our food and we're depending on North America for everything that we eat now. What if there is a situation where there is some kind of a war going on and these things are not far fetched right now? You could recall in 1962. There was something called the Cuba Missile Crisis, where um, Khrushchev, there was a, 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 Ru a Russian boat, a Russian um, submarine that actually came to, to Cuba, to, um, was coming to Cuba to, to come with, um, with, with, with warheads that would have been able to penetrate and go to America. During that time, ships were not free to pass. Ships, any ship that was going into Cuba had to be searched. Now just imagine there is a battle going on in this area. In that the body of water between North America and the Caribbean. Two things could happen. Ships would not be willing to travel there, or if they take another route, the price of the food would be more expensive. These are the things, these are the reasons, people, I'm asking you to plant your own food. This, just this year, 
there was a situation where an american farmer was complaining on the on social media and he was saying that the american government is is they willing to pay them per acre for them not to produce food now that can mean different things because sometimes they may do that just to cause the stock the the um certain um commodity agricultural commodities to shoot up in the in the stocks mark in the stock market but we do not really know he in in his mind and based on his explanation he was saying that it it looks like the government is trying to bring some kind of starvation or something like that but what i'm trying to tell you is they want some of the fundamental things that you need to to say that you have a country is that you need to be able to feed yourself you need to be able to provide food for yourself people let me tell you something when we were small the people who have died they did a good job in producing food for us it was when you went by the castries market you would get all kinds of different kind of yams and different things like that right now even around christmas time it is difficult to get yams there are certain yams you will not even get anymore we have a situation where we say we pain people we have guys that consider themselves to be ministers of Agric ministers of agriculture they have pss and other people working let me tell you something they are more book educated people right now in the ministry of agriculture in saint lucia than we have ever had before but yet we have more abandoned abandoned agricultural lands than we have ever had before places like tones in grand Riviere, these places used to be bread baskets for producing agricultural crops the the other um the, the, one of the bad things about these things is there there are rivers that are passing through those areas fertile lands with rivers and yet the lands are abandoned people it is not a good thing that is why i'm always talking about those things we have abandoned our food production and we decide we're going to let other people produce food for us the other thing is we have people that have been trained and experienced in food production and it is a, it is a shame in a country that people live in their lands and go and work security job in castries for three dollars three to four dollars uh, an hour three to four dollars an hour whereas our farmland is being abandoned and those very people used to be farmers on our lands people we are in a bad situation in in the country we are in a bad situation in saint lucia we do not have gold that we know of we do not have petroleum that we know of other countries have these these minerals these um they have um they have metals they have different things that they can sell to make money they have gold they have bauxite they have cobalt they have different things that they can export to make money we do not have those things what we have we do not want to maximize it how stupid it is that the very basic things that we can produce we end up importing it things like ginger people saint lucia saint lucy imagine nuka import ginger adela saint lucy messie messie guama manu c'est mon nom qui était là avant nous t'es qu'à toujours ni ginger messie ginger t'es toujours là messie nous vivons situation saint lucy right now qu'on nous qu'à import importer nous qu'à importer ginger messie Jejam, we importing ginger. Messi a de leo vlan yem eko pa ha mem ma hen a yem a dan peyi set le si. Ek tout te a badane messi. Te a badane telma messi ko moun te ka produce fe tout di tout di fan ba ye. Moun te ka ne che di yo ka asiz le yo a kato avay bou yo man ye ki yo man ye pou yo man ye. Atchelman tout se plasa se sepan. When you go in places like Denny Riviere, another bread basket again. You just go to Fon Piti, drive through and go up abandoned lands, people. And all of these people, all of these places are there are rivers in those places. In Denny Riviere again, when you go to Monday Z, there is a man named Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott used to produce trucks of bananas plus other things, yam and other things. 
years years ago i tried to go over then i could not drive to go because the road was messed up one man was maintaining the roads and now we have all of these things and people can't maintain the roads you can't drive up to go up there people in this modern era people we reach a stage where so things like tomatoes and these vegetables that are so easy to produce we have to be importing those things from overseas we have to be importing those things and when you ask the relevant authority about that they will tell you things like the farmers don't tell them what what they planted the guys that are responsible for signing to to prevent the, to kind of um say we have enough of this so we do not want that to come in these guys are saying that the farmers are not letting them know what they plant why do we have extension officers why do the, the government pay extension officers every month to get that kind of information to give to people so that we know that we have x amount of pounds of or, ex, or, or x amount of acres of tomatoes on the ground people one of the other fears one of the other concerns that i have is some rich people coming from overseas that are not st lucians and just buying all these farmlands people we have to think because the people that are leading us are not leading us properly some of these people that are leading us have no vision they don't have no love the people make you believe that you need to be educated to run a country and to all of those things education is good education is important and education can help but the most important thing is the love that a man has for his people and, uh, and for his country the, if you love your people if you love your people and if you love your country you'll want it to go forward you'll want to do the best for the people but right now a lot of these people what they depend is they, they depend um showing off profiling profiling and showing up and causing division among the people people go back to the land we're importing too many things how can we import things that we can produce ourselves and the things that you import in what is the quality of it do you know the amount of chemicals contaminants do you know what is in it but the things that you produce you actually have an idea what it is that you have and the thing is you defend those governments when uwp is in power they not uh, and they do not look out for farming the way they're supposed to you defend them when slp is in power and they do not look out for farming they, when they're supposed to you defend them the guys believe that being agriculture minister or supporting agriculture is about giving farmers a half bag of fertilizer here to give that one two bags give that one a half bag that is agriculture for these guys we have a situation where that one of the things that we have now we can still make some money from is bananas there are some people who are making a who can make a living out of banana out of bananas our bananas still sell within the region and in europe but what happened is there are some guys who know nothing about farming know nothing about agriculture never do nothing never plant nothing they will come on national radio and television because they can speak english well some of them probably educated book educated or whatever they come and they say they make it look like banana is dead that's all they say bananas is dead bananas are dead you people think you're so bright you're also in, so, so educated bananas are dead give us an give us an option give us a solution banana more give us an opportunity give us an idea what to what to bring what to plant what to farm all these guys come and do is bananas dead and they make themselves believe that they're so smart and when i listen to these guys i just seen like cartoon characters cartoon characters on the on, on the on, on the on the television cartoon jokers on the thing banana is dead your your people depend on that the people in your country depend on that the country still makes millions of dollars every week and your best argument is banana is dead banana is dead make bring a bring a solution a lot of you people you you have no solutions to nothing you know nothing about agriculture you understand nothing about farming how much money does the country bring in in agriculture in farming per year you have no idea about nothing but you come and you make yourself feel like you're bright Banana's dead. That's your only thing to, um, for you to say. Banana's dead. People, let me tell you something. With the limited money that we have, the little resources that we have, we need to make sure that we maintain, we, we, we run it pro um, properly. There have been some projects, irrigation projects, that we have on, um, embarked on in this country. There is that Rose Hope, um irrigation project. There is one at Deglo. 
Denry um Denry Valley has one and I think there is one in um in in, in Mikud. Millions of dollars were spent on these projects and this these things are not working. The reason and the justification for this project is because we said that during the during the dry season that's when europe need most of our bananas that's when we really need them um, to be producing and we are not producing because of a lack of water and so people wrote pro proposals they got loans or whatever and they embarked on these irrigation projects the irrigation thing that they did in the valley then ran off i went there one time i was making a video they pump houses, some, they, one of them, people took all the galvanized. These things are not functional at all. And we spend millions of dollars on those things. There is a dam that was constructed and everything. And I'm looking at this and I'm just shaking my head. Where these things can be used? People, you remember when, those who remember when there was something called Denry Farmco? You, you were small still? There was Denry Farm Co. We grew up under that. We became um, bigger on all these things. Remember, there was a time if you you were young still, you would walk. You would be walking along the Larisha stretch, and they had the they had the um, overhead sprinklers, and you had to time them because at certain times, if you don't watch, watch yourself, you would get you would get wet. Imagine way back when these people had irrigation systems and pumps that were functional. And we in 2001, we cannot have the technology that these people were using years ago. That shows us that the people that represent us do not care about agriculture. The, 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 the people do not care, the people who are representing us do not care about agriculture. The people who are representing us, they only care about tourism. When it is convenient to them, they make it look like they care about agriculture. We know that there could be a good and, pro uh, and profitable synergy between agriculture and tourism. They only say those things on political platforms and when it is convenient to them. But by their, by their works, you will know that that is not true. Compare the tourism budget to the agriculture budget. Compare agriculture budgets to other things that they spend on. The only thing that these people want to do is to, uh, to offer lip service to agriculture. But people, let me tell you something. We need to go back to farming for our own livelihoods. If not, we're going to be eating each other in the country. And the other thing that we tried, we have to try things. And it was very, very wise of us. We said that the older farmers are dying off or retiring, so we need to replace them with new with, with the um with young people. But this thing is not bearing much fruit. Because they although there are some young people into it, the amount the great number of farmers that we thought young people we thought we were going to bring into far into agriculture, it never really manifested. And so right now we cannot focus our attention only on people between probably 18 and 45. It is not working. There are people who are very interested in agriculture who are in, a, in, a, in an older age group. There are people who are living the government service. I think they live at 55 years old. Some of these people are interested in farming. And it would be wise, you hear it from this channel first, tackle the older people who are interested in farming. A man is 55 years old. Right now we have people who are 70 years old who are still into farming and farming strong. Let's just say we give um, a man works from, a man gets into farming, he, he leaves the government service and he gets into farming. 55 years let's say he does it for 10 years, 55 to 65. Within 10 years a man with good um with with a with good drive and good counsel um and good interest with good support from extension can produce a lot of food within a 10 year period he can change the um his circumstances he can change the um the he one man can really have an impact on um on the local economy one man 
producing one crop can have a tremendous impact on the local economy. And so what I think the government should do, in addition to trying to get people, young people into agriculture, they need to start they need to also target people some of the people who are retiring from the public service and other places at 55 and you do not wait when people are ready to work to tell them about the good things about agriculture we have to start doing these things from the time the children are in um uh, primary school primary school but the way i see it if something drastic does not happen people there will be cannibalism there's a possibility that there be cannibalism in the country another thing that is very important and i think that um if they go the, and not everything the government should do some of these things is private people should be doing those things and i'm giving an idea to somebody or some group of people that are serious you see, just like you have um, bags of flour, bags of sugar, and things like that, you could have bags of plantain flour, bags of yam flour. Now, how do you do that? These things are easy, 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 easy. Sometimes we have people producing plantain, and there's a glut. You could process the plantain. You could process the plantain, make flour out of it, and then use the flour to make something like you know what the Africans call fufu. They make it with cassava, they make it with yams also. And you can sell that just like you would sell flour and things like that. Because these things need to be there. We need to kind of preserve some of our foods. Because there will be shortages. There will be food shortages. And we need to be producing our own thing. So these are things that people can get into. The idea of producing flour, yam flour, or planting flour and things like that. The people who say that they, they are presiding over agriculture in the country. You need to do what you have to do. Because if not, one of these days, you will encourage cannibalism in the country. I'm putting it this way because that is how it is. You have been using agriculture for politics and for, 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 for vain glory for too long. This thing has to change. You like using big words and big terms. Food security. Sustainability. You like these words, but they mean nothing. At the end of the day, it is just words. And we still send millions of dollars overseas for things that we can produce ourselves. One last point. The local indigenous things that we have, we tend to forget our local things and, and get things from overseas. Our local chicken... When you look around, sometimes we do not even see our local fowls no more. Our local chicken, our local fowls, do we see them? What happens is these local animals, they have a more natural immunity. And they do not get sick like these imported things that you are bringing, these other birds that you bring in from overseas. We need to start getting more of our local, um, our local chicks. We need to rear more of them. And the thing is, all of this chicken that is being employed, um, being um, uh, consumed from overseas um, um, sources. Man, have a, a, a little cage by your house. Have 10 chicks, 10, lay, 10, bro 10 broilers, 10 meat birds. Feed them. When they reach a certain size, you slaughter them, put them in your freezer. You eat them when you need them. But we need to think more along the lines of food security. The government people are not serious. They only speak. They're not serious about those things. We need to do those things. If it is that we do not do that, one of these days people will be literally eating each other in this country. Take heed, people. Keep the fire burning. Word. That's true word, man. Real word.